afternoon traders good afternoon traders i uh, hope you can uh, hear me hope you can see me welcome to the uh, next installment in the admiral's uh, trading spotlight webinar series great to have you all here with us uh, today uh, for what will be uh, an interesting topic talking about the commitment of traders report uh, before that listen if you're joining us here today live and stuff that's fantastic you can put your comments in the chat box if you're watching this later on the uh, admiral's youtube channel then please uh, enjoy the session if you uh, finding it useful then be sure to subscribe to it and um, if you found it helpful you know, give us a uh, thumbs up if you like it or even a thumbs down that's fine all feedback is gratefully appreciated for those of you joining us here today day at the end of the session there will be a, a quick little uh, sort of feedback form sent to you we really appreciate it if you just take 30 seconds just to fill that in it always helps us if you've got any thoughts or ideas about topics that you'd like to see me cover in the future or my colleagues Marcus and Jens then be sure to uh, sort of just drop that into that feedback form and we'll, uh, we'll really appreciate it. So as we said here we're going to talk about uh, utilizing the commitment of traders report in your trading. Fascinating subject, which we could go on for days about, okay, going into the depths of it. But what we're going to do here today is give, uh, you know, what was effectively new traders a little bit of an introduction into the Commitment of Traders Report, how it can help, okay, and how you can actually utilise it in your uh, in your own trading. So without further ado, let's uh, switch across the list and, uh, and crack on. Let's just bring this up here then, hopefully. And we'll bring it up here. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. As I said, I uh, hope you can still hear me. Hope you can still see me. Hope you can uh, uh, see the uh, slides as uh, as well. Uh, great to see everyone here. Okay. Janos, uh, Tina, Andreas. Okay. Nicola. Is that Yev? Uh, you know, great to see you all, Andreas. Absolutely super. All right. Uh, this is the uh, English speaking uh, webinar. So, uh, as my uh, accent and voice will have given that away, undoubtedly. Uh, but you are all very, very welcome. And just uh, just so you know, the session is also recorded and you'll be able to see it later on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel, which my uh, wonderful uh, assistant, Nastia, might uh, might actually put a link up there in the uh, in the chat box at some point through to through the session so that you're able to sort of just uh, check that out and look and as I said be sure to subscribe to it so uh, let's talk today about trading using the commitment of traders report the cop report okay uh, it'd be interesting to know here ladies and gentlemen you know what if any experience the people here in the room have of uh, using the cop report maybe you're a completely new trader you've never even heard of it before and that's absolutely fine that's what these sessions are for all right it's a case of you know I appreciate we have a really broad range experience in the room uh, and we have a truly global uh, global audience that join us so for wherever you're joining us in the world you're very welcome we here at admirals hope you're all uh, safe and well wherever you are and uh, and that you are able to sort of navigate this rather uh, tumultuous uh, 2022 which we're uh, experiencing but as i said it'd be good to know what if any sort of information or experience you have of using the cot report so uh vaselina there i, I hope i pronounced your uh, name correctly there says uh, hello uh, uh, zero sadly and that's absolutely fine that's absolutely fine that's uh, that's what these sessions are for to give you just a little bit of a educated introduction into these particular topics as i said the cop report you know you could go into it it's a, it's a real rabbit hole that you could go down and spend a lot of time exploring but uh, you know here we're going to give you just a little bit of introduction so you can get a little understanding of you know where it comes from why it's used what actually you know impact it can have on our own particular trading so uh, remember, here we are, Admirals, okay, uh, Forex and CFD brokers with uh, global presence and local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and giving you the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 trading platforms. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. We're also still running uh, Admiral Trade Days, an opportunity for you to basically, you know, trade on volatility and a chance for you to get a rebate on your uh, uh, on your trading commissions and spreads. If you have any questions about that, check the Admiral's website or have a have a chat with your account representative. But well, what we're going to talk about today, you know, as I said, is the COT report. But we'll talk a little bit about firstly, well, you know, what is it? What is the commitment of traders report? Right? How do we interpret it? and how can we utilize it to trade, all right? So as I said, 
Many people will have never heard of it, but it's something that you want to be aware of. Even if, even if it's not the sort of thing that you might utilize in your own style of trading, it's important to know and understand just as a, as a, as a gaining an understanding of the infrastructure that, you know, the ecosystems that are surrounded by uh, markets. Uh, and you'll find it, you know, it can be an absolutely fascinating insight into, uh, into let's say, how other uh, institutional operators work within, uh, within markets. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's uh, Paul. I've traded for many, many years, okay? And I've traded for funds, for clients, all right? Uh, I've also mentored and coached many traders over the uh, years. Primarily, I like to focus on FX indices and commodities for myself. For longer-term trading, I tend to be a trend trader. And for shorter-term intraday trading, I tend to be a reversal and a mean reversion trader. So here we go how to use the commitment of traders report in your trading. So as the slide says, ladies and gentlemen, what if we could get an idea of where the big dogs are doing their business in the financial markets? Would that be kind of useful information to us? I would suggest so. What if we could get an idea of how the major players are positioning themselves in financial markets? Well, what if we could see where there are divergences between how the major players see the future direction of an instrument? That could be very useful uh, inf information. And thankfully, we can. We can get some insight to that. And it is called the Commitment of Traders Report, or for the short, the COT Report. OK, uh, and this gives you, you know, an idea, an opportunity to get a little bit of insight into, as it says, the big dogs, for want of a better word, all right, how they are positioning themselves in the markets. And that can be very, very useful information. What you will find is that, you know, uh, is that even even the big guys, okay, even the big guys, you know, they, you know, they struggle to do their business without leaving footprints of where and how they're doing their business. Uh, and the COT report is, is part of that, okay, and uh, what we'll do over the next few slides is we'll look to explain, you know, what it is, how it's formed, where it comes from, and actually how we can utilise that in our, uh, in our own uh, particular trading. But to begin with, we just need to know it's a commitment of traders report. The clue is in the name, in that it's, you know, what we're showing is the commitment of traders, traders of a certain size, traders of, let's say, of a certain position within financial markets. And as I said, that can be enormously useful information in helping us build a picture of where those kind of the, the biggest players are uh, currently positioned and what they believe to be the future direction of the markets. So what actually is it? Well, you know, it is the kind of, you know, for want of a better word, it is the big boy macro uh, and it is issued by the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, right? And uh, that is a little hyperlink in there. You might be able to access there through. If not, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to uh, to put that in the uh, when we put up the uh, the sort of the, the YouTube link, okay? But it's not terribly difficult to find. You know, you can have it the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And what we'll do is at the end of this session, with a little bit of time, I'll click onto that link and show you where it is and show you how the actual report is put together. What happens is that the COP report is released weekly, every Friday afternoon, every Friday afternoon, kind of US time around about, uh, uh, well, it would be normally around about sort of could be around about three o'clock, sort of uh, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and that is what uh, that's when the report is released. And what has happened is, is that is calculated from positions that are reported the previous Tuesday afternoon. So the report that will come out this afternoon, all right, is based upon uh, traders declaring their positions from Tuesday afternoon. So it is three days, three days or so out of date, okay? But because of these, you know, because it's really for the, you know, the really big guys, okay? You know, it, you know these are not guys who are gonna be sort of changing their uh, positions on a six pence, okay? Where to be able to sort of, you know, be part of the commitment of traders reports, you have to actually be trading at a particular level. That particular level, depends upon the actual particular uh, instruments so for for some it might be you know if you have you know more than a hundred a hundred contracts okay then that actually have to declare for others it might be a thousand contracts okay you know what we're looking at is you know the real sort of the the big dogs okay the the big macro institutional players and what it does is it shows open interest for the markets which is broken down into three trader positions and what it is, is we see that when we're interested in what's called the short format. And I, and I appreciate if you might not necessarily understand that, okay, I'm just explaining here. 
But what we will do is we will switch across. Okay, you'll see a few examples of as we go. And then actually at the end of the slides, we'll switch across the website and have a quick look at it just to show you what it, uh, you know, where it is, where you can find it and how it actually looks and what we could be of, uh, what could be of interest to us. So it's just, as I said, the important thing just to know, it's uh, released out of the US every Friday afternoon. And it basically it uh, effectively demonstrates the let's kind of the big institutional players' positions from Tuesday afternoon. Okay, and as I said, because they're not you know those those guys they're not they're not sort of you know reversing positions on a sixpence because of the size of their positions. Okay, so even though this might be a couple of days out of date, it is still very very um, valuable and useful information. And as it says, it's kind of broken down into three trader positions, and, and actually now you can actually get it broken down into even further positions. But for the purposes of here today, it's an introduction. You can keep it nice and simple, okay? Nice and uh, nice and easy for a uh, for for a trading introduction. So you know what you'll do is you can find it on the uh, the CFTC website, uh, and if you scroll down, what you're looking at is the thing called current legacy reports, uh, and then you're looking for you know you've got it basically from all of those uh, you know, all those American uh, stock exchanges. Uh, what we're looking for is the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Uh, and as I said, you know, we're really particularly just looking at the short format on the futures only report. OK, and, and we'll show what that looks like okay, in a couple of slides. And as I said, at the end of this show, we'll, we'll go across to the we'll go across the website and actually show you where you can find it, where you can click on it, because it could be something that you just add into your weekly routine that, you know, on a Friday afternoon, you spend a little time, have a little bit of a look. Just look at, you know, a couple of your favorite trading instruments. Just to get a little bit of an interest in terms of an insight into you know what where and what the big guys are playing at so uh, as i said it, you know the, the cut report it can be broken down into let's say kind of three players okay three three different distinct types you'll have the commercials right commercial traders registered okay with the cftc that's showing a related business for which futures are used as a hedge Right, and that's important to know. Okay, the commercials, you know, they are perhaps like the big agri business, or the you know, the, you know, in the in the uh, commodities, you know, they are like the big miners. Okay, they are actually in a related business to that instrument. Right, so futures are used as a hedge. They're not in there speculating for profit. They are there as part of their ongoing day to day business. That's important to understand. The second one is, is what they would call non-commercial, all right? And these are primarily, primarily, not always, but primarily comprised of large speculators, namely commodity funds, but it can also be, you know, or it can also be some of the, uh, the big banks and other big funds, okay? Big boy, you know, macro institutional funds. Uh, and then the final ones are what you might see is they call like the non-reportables or the small speculators, and as that line implies, they're just made up of small commercial hedges and small speculators. Okay, and even though they're small speculators, what I might suggest is you know that you know they are still operating at a position you know um, far bigger. Okay, far bigger than you know, the vast majority of private you know private retail traders. Okay, when we're putting in small speculators, you know there is still a uh, they are still a good sized operation, but just not compared to the major commercial operators. And the major non-commercial speculators. Okay, so uh, those are the kind of three, um, the three areas, the three players. Okay, that uh, that you'll find that the cot report is broken down into. And what we're trying to understand is, you know, what they see as the future direction and actually how they are positioned. Because as I said, that can be uh, enormously helpful and useful to ourselves in our own operations. So here is here is an example of the short format, okay? Uh, and here we go. Let's bring up the old drawing tool. So this is one for uh, this is an interesting one because this was in from a time when we were in a in a run up to the uh, Brexit uh, uh, vote in the UK. And what it is is a sort of a tool here. You know, it's really here we go. It's a, it's on uh, futures only of the British pound sterling. Hopefully you can see it uh, there as I, as I just draw around that. Um, as I always say, you know, I'm a better trader than I'm an artist. So appreciate my uh, graphic drawing. OK, but, you know, you get the impression, don't you? you get the understanding. Futures only positions, you know, for that big as into sort of you know, at the end of March, the 29th of March. And here, as I said, is you know, where we, it's broken down into, let's say, the three players we've got here. We've got the non-commercials. OK, uh, and what we can see is, you know, how many of the non-commercials are long and how many 
them are short. And in this particular case, what we can see is, you know, there are, what's that, you know, just under 39,000, right, non-commercial long contracts in British Pound, as opposed to, right, just under 79,000 non-commercial short positions, okay, in terms of the short contracts. Uh, and it will also tell you a little bit about what's the change from last week's, okay, uh, and in this particular case, there seems to be an awful lot more people who, you know, picked up uh, non-commercials who picked up sort of short contracts. As I said, then we have the commercials, right? The commercials, and what we can see here is, you know, commercials, they have what's that, you know, really just under 194,000 long contracts in British pound, uh, as opposed to 133,000 short, okay, in the British pound. Then, as I said, we've got the non reportables, the small speculators, all right? Uh, and you can see, you know, there are those that, that, um, that group have 14,000 long contracts. As opposed to thirty-four thousand, right, which is nearly almost thirty-five thousand short contracts. So very uh, short positions. So very quickly, you can start to you know the three different players, and also you know what they have in terms of their own particular positions. You know how many of them are long, how many of them are short. All right, very uh, very quickly. And I said this is a snapshot. Okay, so you know you will be able to. As we'll go in in a couple of slides time. We'll be able to take a little bit of an insight, a little bit of interest and understanding out of it. But as we go into it, we'll start to pick up and actually see how the relationships between them actually uh, helps give us a better insight into what is going on in those markets. So, you know, uh, that's all very nice, isn't it? You know, it's nice to see the sort of information like that. But really, it's, you know, what is it it's about is important to you, okay? How do you start to utilise this information in your own trading decisions? The most important thing is to see is the actual positions of the categories of traders, okay, especially things like the net position change. That's what we want to see is if there is a big, big major change occurring. Uh, and you know, it's not terribly difficult, okay. You know, what you're going to be looking to do is to calculate you're going to subtract the short contracts from the long contracts, which will give you an idea of what their you know what their net position is. So positive results indicates a net long position. So you've got more longs than short, they are biased to the long side. What's the negative result indicates a net short position, okay? That they, you know, they've got more shorts and longs, right? So you don't necessarily have to worry about this at the moment. It's just, as I said, giving you a bit of an introduction to understanding how that COP report is put together and how you can start to utilize the information in your own trading, okay, to give you an idea of you know, where the big boys are, position and what they believe the future direction is likely to be. So what you'll find many people, okay, many analysts will say is that the most important thing is the actual change in net positions of the commercial hedges, all right? So I'll just take that on board. The important thing is the actual change in net positions of the commercial hedges. Why is that? Why would you think that? It's because the commercial operators, you know, maybe it might be a big miner, maybe it's, you know, a big, uh, you know, a big commodity house, okay, a big agribusiness. The commercials are generally believed to have the best fundamental supply and demand information. And, and when I say supply and demand information, I mean actual fundamental supply and demand of that, what might be a particular commodity in one case, okay? Rather than people, let's say, you know, trading supply and demand on their charts. That's a, it's a very different concept, ladies and gentlemen. This is, we're looking at the fundamental supply and demand, you know, economics 101, all right? In terms of having that information, on the uh, on the actual uh, commodities or uh, this kind of instruments that they are exposed to by their by their particular business. So, you know, we know that the commercials have the best info, but what you have to remember is okay. What you have to remember is that the commercials they are not in the market for profit. Remember that the commercials are not in the market for profit. Okay. They are effectively using those positions in, let's say, in you know, certain FX markets, might even be you know, in, in the actual uh, commodities themselves. They are hedging their position. What they're looking to do, they're hedging their position, is they are transferring risk to their suppliers. That's the way to, that's the way to consider it, okay? What is interesting, and, and, and what I would suggest you take a note of, is that the non-commercials, remember the kind of large commodity funds, the large banks, they are usually not as good as you would have believe. Okay. The non commercials are usually not as good as you would have believe. That doesn't mean they're wrong all the time, 
but very often they are on they can be on the wrong side and it might be a bit of a surprise to you because you know you see you see those big financial institutions around the world who've got you know very nice big offices okay everybody gets paid very well the employer lots of very smart people you know you would be surprised maybe to find out that actually sometimes they are not the uh, the best operators within markets and so one of my tips okay one of my little sort of you know suggestions is that you use the non-commercials as a contrarian indicator and i'm going to show a few examples from a couple of my own trades over the years okay that give you an example of how you know you can utilize that information to help you with your own trading and and, you know, and this i would say you know it suits swing and longer term trading okay you know remember these are the big guys as i said earlier they're not going to be turning their positions all right you know uh, on a sixpence you know they're they are more like a big you know big oil super tanker okay it takes a long time to to change their positions so if you're an intraday trader trading i don't know five minute charts okay then you know the the cot report is probably not going to be massively helpful because it's going to be a huge disconnect between you know what's going on on a very very short time frame and what you actually see is the kind of the bigger position but if you're taking you know swing trades you know four hour daily weekly monthly charts okay you know this is very very useful to understand you know how the big guys are positioning themselves So um, what I've got there is, you know, I've put in a uh, you know a whole host of you know interesting little uh, links for you. Uh, you know, you'll be able to sort of you know click into them in the uh, in the on when they're on the uh, YouTube channel because there's just lots to read about here. There's lots of great stuff you can read about to understand to increase your own understanding. Okay, if you want to go further, uh, you know, as I say, further down the rabbit hole. As I said, today is just about having a little bit of uh, an introduction. I'll show you one or two of the tools that I use myself just to sort of get a little bit of a, an idea, just to get a little bit of understanding of, you know, how the uh, how it all plays out together. So here's a, a bit of an example from my own trading, okay? on how to use the, uh, the commitment of traders report in your own trading. So, and this is back from a, a year or two ago. Uh, and what it is, is, you know, what we've got here is, da, 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 is that, you know, uh, you know, I'm here particularly looking at the, the Japanese yen there, okay? The Japanese yen uh, and is at that time for, you know, the kind of the uh, sort of mid-March, 13th of March, all right? Uh, and what, you know, I could see is that, you know, the, in the non-commercials, okay, the non-commercials add, 44,000 long contracts, okay, as opposed to 123,000 short contracts, okay, 123,000 short contracts. So the non commercials were effectively, you know, they were effectively, you know, um, short of the, the Japanese yen, short of the, you know, the, the Japanese yen itself, okay. The commercial operators, the commercial operators there, okay. They were they had 193,000 long uh, contracts uh, opposed to short 122,000. So the commercials bias was to be long in the Japanese yen. The non-commercials were heavily short the Japanese yen. Okay, so just just remember that. Okay, the Japanese yen, you know, non-commercials heavily short. The commercials, I know, are, are definitely long. At the time, you know, I also do my own analysis here, okay, the, the sort of strength, uh, what I call the STAM, which is all about understanding strength and weakness, strength, trend and momentum, uh, and the Japanese yen was, uh, you know, particularly strong, okay, so the Japanese yen had been particularly strong for, you know, a month or two, okay, the, the commercials were long yen, the non-commercials were short yen, so just, uh, just remember that, okay, just remember, and remember what I said earlier that Sometimes the non-commercials can be uh, a very good, uh, a, you know, a very good contrarian indicator. And on the other side, what we had here is this is the Canadian dollar. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The Canadian dollar here. Bang. This Canadian dollar, and you know, and on my uh, on my particular stamp, the the Canadian dollar, okay, was actually um, very very weak. Okay, very, very weak, very short. Okay, you should be short the uh, the Canadian dollar because it was at the bottom of the pile. So I've got my analysis is showing the yen is strong, the commercials are long the yen, the non commercials are short the yen. The non commercials have just put 60,000 long contracts in, uh, in Canadian dollar, 
as opposed to 40,000 short contracts. So they are, they are more long, okay? They have long positions in Canadian dollar. The commercials, okay? The commercials, they have 50,000 long as opposed to 73,000 short. So when it comes to Canadian dollar, the non-commercials are long, the commercials are short, and my own analysis saying I should be short. Hopefully, maybe you know some of you can start to pick up and see you know what might be occurring here. Okay, what might actually be going on, uh, and actually what happens is you know when we when we actually go to the chart. Well, that was the actual chart at the time. Okay, where the CAD yen was in a you know in a very very strong downtrend and had been, you know had been for effectively two months really had been in a very very strong downtrend. You know, and as I was just showing you, you know, uh, the what we saw was that, you know, my own analysis was strong yen, commercials are long yen, non-commercials were um, uh, were short yen, as opposed to the Canadian dollar, right? The Canadian dollar, the non-commercials were short, the Canadian dollar, my analysis was to be, you know, uh, the, sorry, apologies, the non-commercials were, uh, um, were long, were non-commercials were long Canadian dollar, the commercials were long the Canadian dollar, you know, I, I was effectively, you know, um, short the uh, Canadian dollar as well. So, you know, what we had there was the non-commercials acting as a very good contrarian indicator. OK, they were short yen and long CAD, whereas the, the commercials and myself all right, were short CAD, long yen. And as you can see, the price action just did not did not reflect that at all. And, and that is how, you know, you can start to basically start to, 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 to basically piece these together. And especially from, as I said, for myself, who's someone who likes particularly uh, trade uh, FX pairs, you know, if you're trading them on a longer term uh, uh, basis, when you're understanding when there is, you know, when there is a big divergence, okay, when there's a big divergence between how the commercials are positioned and how the non-commercials are positioned, you know, that can give you, you know, really good insight into the, probably the future trajectory of the uh, uh, of that particular instrument, but also when they flip, okay, when they flip, that also gives you an indication of you know if something big has major has changed, and that might be when we get to see a a reversal happen. But remember, you know, as I said, these guys, you know, they're trading, you know, huge contracts there, okay, you know, huge amounts of contracts, things like that don't change, okay, you know, the, the trades like that, they don't change overnight, okay, the market doesn't just flip like that, it takes time, okay, for, as I said, it's like turning a super tanker, it takes time before it gets in the right trajectory. And that actually helps, you know, that can help you as a pride because it allows you to just sit and wait and wait for a good technical setup in what you believe will be the new direction based on the COT report, you know, rather than actually having to sit there and watch, you know, every, you know, every tick on the uh, on the screen. Uh, here's a, another example here. This is to do with the euro. All right. Uh, in particular, what we've got here is this is, you know, the uh, euro FX picture. All right. Now, at that time, at the time, you know, uh, my for me, my own analysis had basically the, the euro had been strong, but was starting to weaken. All right. It was starting to it was starting to effectively to, to roll over. What we had here for the non-commercials was the non-commercials were long. 200, nearly 240,000 contracts and short, okay, 90,000 contracts. So overall, you know, their overall their position, you know, they were basically long the euro. On the other side of it, the commercials, okay, they had 220,000 long positions as opposed to almost 400,000, all right, short positions in the euro. So, you know, overall, they're, you know, uh, their bias was to the short side in the euro okay and as i said mine you know i was just starting to see it it's gone from being from one to three it was starting to sort of come off the top okay so myself and the commercials okay you know i had a view that they were short the non-commercials were long the euro okay so just uh, just remember that because when we look at the uh, kind of the the, um, uh, the the next chart well you know this was against uh, the us dollar okay and what we saw here was you know, uh, Euro had had a nice run up. Okay, Euro, this is the daily chart. It had a nice run up. But what we can see here, let me just move this out of the way, is you know, once price had hit that 125 level, what we saw was we actually had you know, a really very clear triple top there. Okay, triple top that was finished with a key reversal. Uh, and as I said, price had started to basically come away. Okay, and was now forming basically lower highs hopefully you can see that so you know my technical analysis my stam analysis was saying that you know basically euro was weakened and was ready to roll over the commercials were heavily short euro 
but the non-commercials were, you know, were mostly long euro. Remember what I'm saying, the non-commercials can be quite a useful contrarian indicator. Not all the time, but, but a lot of the time, you can start to sort of marry those up to get an idea of actually how this all sort of, you know, all this plays out. Uh, and actually what happened was, you know, this is a kind of a chart from later on in the year is, you know, as I was saying, you know, once we'd had that triple top there, well, then basically, you know, we started to get those are kind of uh, lower, uh, lower highs. And then, as you can see, price absolutely collapsed. OK, the, the euro collapsed generally across, well, against pretty much everything. OK, but as I said, the COP report, you know, was starting to give us an indication that, you know, that the, they, you know, the big dogs, OK, certainly the commercials, OK, they were they were you know positioned short and actually as i said the non-commercials you know what you expect to be the kind of the big banks the big you know commodity funds they were quite wrong right they were on the wrong side of it and as you can see price basically you know uh, played out and collapsed completely and and that's you know as i said that that is the sort of thing you're waiting to to experience it doesn't happen overnight okay as i said these big boys you know they have to reposition themselves that can take a you know that can take a good bit of time but you know once you start to get uh, an understanding a little bit of a you know into a little bit of a groove of as you know adding in the cop report as part of your big picture analysis well then you can start to sort of you know understand you know where and uh, um, where and how these uh, these you know these particular uh, these particular positions start to build and then once they crack and collapse you can see that you know there's the opportunity for a really uh, really fabulous uh, really fabulous run so uh, uh, I think it's Losi's asking, do we have the COP for stocks or it's currency information only? Uh, no, what you'll find is that the commitment of traders, you will find that there is for, it's for currencies, okay? It is for commodities, both uh, uh, the kind of the, the softs and the uh, the hards. Uh, you will also find for, uh, you know, for uh, fixed income uh, and you will also find for some, uh, for some stocks as well, okay? And as I said, at the end of this, what we'll do is we'll switch across and I'll show you I'll show you where you can actually find the information. You can have a little look into that uh, to your heart's content. As I said, there's an awful lot of information you can go into. Today is just like just a just a little bit of an you know an introduction there. Okay, just a little bit of a a way to uh, 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 sort of just start to understand the COP report. So, what can we learn from what we've just talked about there? Well, you know, when the commercials and non-commercials are heavily positioned against each other. This is when we can expect good moves, all right? You know, so sometimes they're very closely aligned, in which case you might find that the price action is not doing that much either. But when they're heavily positioned at extremes against each other, that is when things start to get interesting for us. Generally, the non-commercials are often wrong. Not always, all right? Often wrong when positioning is at its extreme, all right? Not always, but it is a, it's a good rule of thumb. And hopefully I've just shown you a few examples there of, what you can see is when it's a very clear bias, okay, between where the commercials are, you know, positioning themselves and where the non-commercials are positioning themselves and how that can actually help you. That is when we start to get, you know, good moves, okay, that's when they start to be there for us and we can utilise that information to position ourselves. So basically, you know, you know, think of it like, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, ride a, ride a kayak downstream, okay, why would you want to spend all your energy trying to fight your way upstream? When in fact, actually, you know, the easiest, the best way is for you to just basically sort of get in and try and ride the flow all the way down. OK, that's the way that's the way I kind of that's the way I kind of particularly uh, uh, look for it. OK, that's the uh, that's the way I would describe it. OK, not to try, not trying to, you know, not trying to fight the market. I mean, you're very welcome to fight the market, but the, the likelihood is you'll be the one that loses. Why would you do that when actually there's this information out here? That could help you just position yourself to sort of try and ride those kind of longest, uh, uh, longest and easiest runs. Vaseline says because it's easy to complicate. Yes, it is. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's very uh, honest of you. Well done. All right. And uh, you know, and it has to be said, men here as well. Men, you know, we are very, very good at overcomplicating things. Okay. We look at things and think, oh, it can't be this easy. What I'm going to do is add extra layers of complexity. All right. And actually, you know, when it comes to trading less is more, all right? Just try and keep it as simple as possible. If you can find where the flow is, all right, where that kind of, where that sort of, you know, where that money flow is, then basically just put your boat in there and try and, you know, try and ride that stream, okay? Don't try and fight it, try and ride that stream. And I appreciate that sometimes that is easy for me to sit here and say that, you know, but, you know, it's uh, it's done and it's done all the time and it can be done. And it's just a little bit of practice, okay? A little bit of work here. You can start to set yourself up to, to work quite awkwardly. Uh, yeah, easier said than done. It's, you, know, you know, it is, you know, I can appreciate that it's, it can be, but, you know, if you just add into your routine, 
that just to check the cut report okay you know um, over the weekend very quickly and you're not for everything it might just be for a couple of your favorite current streets a couple of your favorite instruments you could soon start to build that into your overall big picture analysis you could soon start to sort of give yourself just a little bit of an idea of you know how how markets are positioning themselves so that on the the times when you see that there is alignment with you know your maybe your own analysis and with the cut analysis that's an opportunity for you to really to you know set to position yourself accordingly so, um, you know, uh, I've got another couple of examples. Now, this is a, a picture from a site called cotbase.com, which is a, a commercial operation, but you, you can have a free look at it. You can look at that cotbase.com. And what they do is, you know, they do very well is that they, you know, they, they actually sort of, you know, uh, generate it as a, as a chart, okay, in terms of the, uh, the, the net positions for the cot. Uh, and what you can hopefully see here, this is, you know, this is the British pound, okay. Uh, and, and at that particular time, okay, you know, back in there September, British pound. What we had was the commercials, where you know, uh, predominantly net long, and the uh, sort of the large speculators, like the non-commercials, were effectively short. Okay, they were short sterling at that particular uh, time, and you can see there's a bit of divergence. Uh, and, and you know, most of the uh, the small speculators were short as uh, as well. So just uh, just bear in mind, you know, you can see that, and it is uh, it's a very useful little tool that if you can go down this particular road, it can actually help you identify. It. And we'll we'll show you a little bit later. We've got the time, but you know, that is a way that they can sort of you know um, demonstrate, okay, the 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 cop positioning on that, uh, you know, and if we, we look at to that particular time in a short format, what we had was that you know you can see non commercials were 130,000 contracts short as opposed to 37,000 long. Okay, so those non-commercials are uh, are short. The commercials, okay, are 207,000 long as opposed to 96,000 contracts short. So they're effectively, basically, they are looking for uh, longs. And what we actually saw is on the uh, on the price is that uh, price went down to this basically 120 level and bounced and effectively, you know, just rose for the next couple of weeks quite nicely okay we had sterling strength okay we had sterling strength coming in there right at, at that same time i mean you know what we were seeing was you know you know non-commercials been heavily short commercials heavily long but actually what happened is you know the, the price bounced off a big number and actually sort of rode quite nicely off that okay you know just the the commercials were in control at that particular uh, uh, by that particular stage uh, at the same time, you know what we had was also the uh, is that you know this was the this was the rate of the euro against the British pound, all right? Uh, and actually, the sort of the, the non commercials, okay, they were pretty, you know, they were a little bit long, okay, a little bit long, okay, uh, the uh, uh, the kind of euro, but not not you know it was mostly in balance, all right. Um, but actually, what we had is the commercials, you know, the the commercials were kind of heavily short okay 17,000 or 18,000 versus 9,000 they were mostly you know uh short the kind of uh, uh euro fx uh british pound rate which is basically effectively we've just seen on the previous slide you know they were they were long sterling here they're kind of short euro sterling and actually what we saw was you know the basically the the you know the the price action was uh, the price action was demonstrating that okay you know they, they effectively that the commercials were you know heavily short euro against the sterling and the price action was replicating that okay so as i said you know just a little bit of practice okay a little bit of looking and reading gives you an opportunity to build a picture okay it's you know the, as i said it doesn't change like that overnight but you know it'll start with it with your own analysis you'll start to get a good idea and a good grasp on you know where the big boys are positioning themselves and as i said those are the guys you know you want to actually you know you want to you want to sail with so here's your task from today's session ladies uh and gentlemen, right, go away and look at your favorite trading instrument. Open up the COT report, okay, for that particular instrument. See what was the relationship between the big moves and the COT positioning, okay? And, uh, you know, have a look at how that reflected on your charts. And, and were there correlations between the moves and the positioning of the commercials and the non-commercials? Have a little look at that, okay? Was it in that particular instrument that the non-commercials is a very good contrarian indicator? As I said, it's a bit of a rule of thumb, all right? But, you know, it's something that you can take as a starting point for you to look at in terms of doing your own COT analysis. So in conclusion, remember, the COT report gives us insight into the moves of the major players. It's released every Friday. The commercials and the non-commercials and the small speculators make up the, uh, on the short format, the kind of major three uh, groups. Generally, 
don't fight the commercials. If the commercials are heavily you know, positioned one way, don't fight them. But just remember the commercials, they're there for hedging. They're not actually there speculating. When the comms and the non-comms, okay, when they flip, it's very often when big moves will occur. Okay, And if that doesn't happen out often, it might only happen once or twice a year. When it does happen, be aware. And generally, the COP report, building that picture into your analysis, you know, it generally tends to suit swing and longer term trading. Okay, it's it's not something that you know you're going to look at on a Friday and then immediately build into your five minute trading plan. Okay, it tends to suit the longer term trading. And so, if you're trading around a day job, okay, this actually might help because it's something you can do a little bit of time at the weekend just to update, and that will give you the ideas on actually how to to operate. Okay, and where there might be opportunities setting up. All right, don't forget to join us there next time. Okay, right, which is on Wednesday, fourth of May. Come back and join me because I'm going to be talking about candlesticks for beginners. All right? How are candlesticks created? What's the history behind them? How to use them in your trading? That will suit, you know, kind of a, uh, people beginning out on their trading journey. When is that? Wednesday, fourth of May. Okay, two o'clock London time. Check your inbox for the webinar link. All right, or register on the website. Uh, and as always, you can contact us there, Admiral Markets. Okay, email us at global@admiralmarkets.com, and you'll find this video and others on both the uh, Admiral's Global YouTube channel and on the Facebook uh, page as well. So, uh, you know, as I said, just bear with us a minute. Hope you found it useful. We've got a couple of minutes left, and that just gives me a chance just to switch across, okay? So just uh, bear with us a moment. We'll have a little look at the uh, CFT website and how you can find the information just so you can take a little look yourself, and we'll put, the, uh, we'll put the links available for you as well. So just bear with us one moment. Okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that you can still hear me, I'm hoping that you can still see me, okay. Um, uh, here we are at the uh, CFTC website, okay, cftc.gov, okay, there you go, you can see it, you know, uh, and not unsurprisingly, market reports, commitment of traders, okay. It will, it will bring you up there, but what we're looking at is for the commitment of traders. As I said, there is lots of, uh, lots of, you know, information there, okay, there's lots of stuff that you can, uh, you know, as I said, you can uh, utilise to your heart's content, all right. To, to enjoy okay if that is what you know, if that's you know if that's how you like to spend your weekends but you know what we're looking for here is you know this is the commitment of uh, traders report and what we can go is you know just you don't have to scroll down it's not the most um let's say it's not the most kind of uh, intuitive of websites shall we say but it does give you a breakdown of you know what's uh, what's going on okay what's happening how they are how the data is put together okay in the history and if you go down to the bottom what we're looking for okay is that you know, uh, we're looking at the current legacy reports, CME, okay, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the short format, okay, that's what we're looking particularly at is, and then if I just uh, click on that, I said, hopefully, bang, All right, and this is how it comes up, I mean, it's kind of, kind of old school in its own way, isn't it, kind of old school, uh, and you can see what's available there, and you can see, you know, just looking there, you've got butter, all right, okay, milk, uh, non-fat dry milk or everything okay here all sorts of commodities okay for commitments all right lean hogs okay live cattle all right okay lumber all of those there but you know what we're going to be looking at is particular for me fx pair so i can see i've got you know the canadian dollar is uh, is there i've got the the swiss franc okay the mexican peso uh, the british pound okay uh, japanese uh, japanese yen is there uh, you know, have a look at the kind of the Euro FX there, okay, even if we just look at uh, that very quickly for the last moment or two. Uh, bum, 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 let's bring up the old drawing tool here. Um, so, you know, you know, if we look at that, okay, uh, the non-commercials, okay, the 221,000 contracts long, okay, against 189,000 contracts short. So, you know, we'd be saying is that, you know, they, the, the non-commercials have, you know, about 30 odd thousand, you know, positions long, contracts long, okay. Uh, as effectively as against the uh, the commercials, okay? Commercials are long 362,000 and they are short 412,000. So what I'd say that's about 50,000 contracts to the short side on the commercials. The commercials have a short bias on Euro. The non-commercials have a long bias on Euro, okay? So, you know, very quickly, you can just get a very quick picture, okay? Is there a particular bias? And that would then help you. And you can go through that. And as I said, find, you know, you just have to find one or two of the, the, the currencies or instruments that you particularly trade and you could find that and utilize that. Uh, and then what you could do is you could go and have a little look at, uh, let's have a bring out, have a look at, I've got here, um, COP base here. 
cockbase.com okay and said you can you know you can buy and purchase all of them i'm not here to I'm not here to sell them but you know it's a useful little tool that is a free tool that you can use i'm here just looking at euro futures okay and uh you know, just looking at your futures here and, you know, and look at how they've uh, demonstrated that, namely, they have the large the speculators are long, okay, the commercials are uh, commercials are short, which is what we've just seen. And you can also see, you know, what has the price been doing over the, uh, you know, over the last uh, last few days, weeks and months, okay, you can see that basically, even though the non-commercials are long, the price has most definitely been short. So, you know, that's, uh, that's well, you know, how that operates. So, so you can look at that as well, just to help build the picture. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, all right, okay, just a little bit of insight into, you know, what the COT report is, and how you could possibly utilize it in your own trading. As I said, it does particularly, you know, favor the kind of swing and longer term traders, but I think all traders should at least, you know, have a look at going through the, uh, the, the COT report for one or two of their favorite instruments, just to give themselves an understanding of a flavor of exactly how those big those big players are, uh, are positioning themselves. Um, I hope you found that uh, useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight. Okay. Uh, as always, as I said, um, you know, if you've uh, been watching this later on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. Okay. If it's been good, give us a thumbs up. If you know it's not been useful to you, thumbs down. That's absolutely fine. Uh, also, you'll get a, uh, a little feedback form coming after directly after this uh, uh, session. Would appreciate if you take a few seconds to, to take that in. Uh, and as always, I wish you the uh, uh, very best of success in your own trading. Uh, trade well, everybody. Take care.